So I wanted to make this video because the other day an absolute champ commented on the stylized cloth wrinkles video saying that you can use the weighted normals modifier in Blender to make the folds more visible in Roblox. Now explaining normals thoroughly is very complicated and I'm definitely not knowledgeable enough to explain it in depth. However, from the videos I've watched, a simplified explanation is that a vertex normal impacts how a smooth surface is displayed in Blender. Smoothing in Blender by default averages the vertex normals along the normals of other vertexes. This means that if you smooth something that is very low poly and has a, an edge really close to it, it will look extremely smooth because Blender's smoothing function averages these vertex out. Blender by default doesn't take into consideration that these two uh, edges that are very close to each other shouldn't have the same amount of impact on the smoothing as a face that is much flatter and larger than it, like right next to it. If you look at an R6 model, the edges look rounded while everything else is flat. In the previous video, when I cleared the normal data, you can see that the limbs of the R6 model is a lot smoother than before. It makes the edges smoothness look like it's being blended into the flat area. This is because Blender doesn't consider the impact that the vertex normals on the edge should have on the entire model, but rather averages the smoothness alongside the big faces. Weighted normals basically just allows you to control that. Alrighty, so here we are in Blender. I'm going to demonstrate how the weighted normals modifier work. So firstly, let's do it on the torso because as you can see, when I removed the custom split normals, it made everything smooth. So and the torso is like the biggest outlier from this. It made it look so weird. And you can see it in the studio with the matte cap light. So uh, let's change that real quick. So for weighted normals to work, you need to have auto smooth to be on. I like to just right click and click shade auto smooth. As you can always see a change, but. I don't know if these actually make a difference. I think you actually, I don't think the angle of the auto smooth matters. I think it's more that you just have auto smooth on. That's really all that matters. Now, as you can see, there's definitely a change. So uh, if we hide these two, you see that, uh, if I turn off my frame, the faces here, they don't really contribute to the smoothing. Uh, they contribute too much to smoothing, I should say, than they should. This face is so much larger. It should be flatter, right? But Blender's default smoothing, it averages out everything, so it makes everything look smoother. This, however, when we add the weight to it, face area weight mode, what face area weight mode does is it basically, well, it takes the area of the faces. The area of this, uh, this edge here is really, really small. So it should have less impact on the smoothing itself. And that's exactly what it does. The larger face have more impact and so they're smoother. We can increase this to make it more extreme. So if we put it to 100, compared to 50, it doesn't make that much of a difference, but it does make it even more extreme as you can see. This part is even uh, stronger and this part is even flatter. Uh, this can also work backwards, backwards. So like if it has more face area, it can be smoother. So if I pull this down below 50 here, this is basically the opposite. Um, it makes everything even more smoother because the flat faces with the more, more areas gets less impact. Though I don't think you'd really want to use that. So just keep this 50 for now. I think Roblox keeps it at the absolute max. So like a Roblox character. Yeah, I could probably draw a reference into here in editing and you guys can judge that, but I think I'll keep it at 100. It looks pretty nice. Let's copy this modifier over. Yeah, it looks pretty nice. We can also put this on all the limbs as well. Might as well. Oh, there you go. Shade everything all the smooth. 
And now it looks like a regular Robux character again. <laughs> um, you guys may see this. Uh, ignore this for now. They're just lighting. Uh, I was using them to check the normal stuff. So now we can uh, apply it to the sleeves. As you can see, if we zoom in on the sleeves here, it's it's far too smooth, right? Like this part, this uh, so area here is pretty concentrated. It should have less impact on the entirety of this other area because it's flatter, right? Well, let's see how it looks then. Let's try that. Let's try it out. Oh, doesn't look very good, doesn't it? Now the reason is because by default, it doesn't keep the sharpness that we've already marked. So as you can see, we did in the previous video. <coughs> Ignore these. These are the split normals. So the actually, you know what? I'll just explain this right now. I honestly don't know enough about normals to say anything, as I said. So I think to get this effect, weighted normals actually manipulates the split normals and the uh, uh, vertex normals to get the specific shading. I don't know what it split normal necessarily means. Maybe like the object is split in the game engine or something like that. But that's just something I want to mention. Uh, I would recommend you guys, if you guys want a more in-depth look at uh, normals, I'll link some videos in the description of some videos I thought that were that explain normals pretty well. I just don't know enough to say anything really. But if we close this, you see all the edges that we marked in the previous tutorial don't show up in the final. It doesn't show up in the model when we put weighted normals on here. This is really simple. You just turn on keep sharp. So we put that on and boom. We got our sharpness back. And as you can see, the edges are already getting some work put onto them. Now, I think it could be stronger, right? So let's just increase this a bit. And woo. That looks pretty good. That's Honestly, I don't know much about this, so why don't we mess around with this for a bit, actually, and see what works. I think this is what TDS absolutely does. Uh, let's just pull the lighting over here real quickly. Yeah, look at that. It just looks a lot cleaner, doesn't it? You don't really see the, the normalist error. And if you want to preview the um, the old version, you can also just turn this to turn off the uh, real-time display of the weighted normals. And as you can see, that it makes one hell of a difference, especially near the edges up here. Now, one thing I am curious about is whether this has any effect on N-Gons or not. And I guess because we're testing it here, we might as well make a few extra cuts that causes N-Gon on the model and see what happens. Because I am curious. I wonder if uh, it takes away the N-Gon a bit so you don't have to fix it as much. Um, I still recommend you do, but hey, this style, as I said, do does trade. Ngons does trade a topology for design, so it is a compromise in that case. However, we'll see if this improves it in any ways. So here we have a big Ngon. Usually you fix it by doing that. And to answer the question, I think it definitely does affect it. Not as much. I think there's definitely a lot you can mess around with these, and I'm definitely not knowledgeable enough to say anything. However, I think that looks pretty good. I think like a certain angle, you can see some uh, shading issues here. Like it's a little lighter on this part for some some reason. Better than that. It looks pretty nice, honestly. Yeah, like. This looks a little interesting. Overall, I'd say that's pretty good. Um, we can now apply this to the dress as well. I also, 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 I was gonna do this in the last video. Uh, I'm just gonna 
A L S put the cut here, put this out a bit, select everything, alt N, alt N to bring on the normals menu, and click recalculate outside and boom. We now have the uh, address that's actually 3D and not just a single plane. <laughs> I forgot to do that in the previous video. Even though I, I know you can turn on double sided, I think this would just look a bit better when we put the modifier onto it. It does add a lot of triangles though. That is the main downside. <clears throat> I'm not going to go in depth into it in this video, but if you want to optimize it, you can just like merge these points together. So there, the entirety of this is just one point right here because no one really needs to see uh, anything above this sleeve, right? I mean, no one needs to see it, right? Anyways, <laughs> let's uh, add a weighted normal and see how it looks. What the flip? Let's keep going. Uh, I guess that didn't really help it, didn't it? It helps this edge. Maybe if I take this away. I guess it does. I guess this uh, this one was pretty poorly made. As you can see, it didn't really do that much. Didn't have much of an effect on it. It made some part stronger and some part weaker. It, it definitely improves the shading on this edge here, but the actual cuts themselves didn't got much of an improvement. Let's keep that in mind. I think these. Actually, hold on. Maybe if we move these closer, they can have more of an effect as well. Because it decreases the area of the faces. Yep, it does. Make them a lot sharper. Look at this. You don't see that, don't you? Now, there isn't a right or wrong way to do this. Like, if I put the lighting on here, you may want this in your final model it's fine if you want this it's also fine i just wanted to make this video because i didn't realize weighted normals could improve the uh um, this effect in such a specific way so i thought if you guys want to to replicate this specific effect this is how you do it it's all about art direction though so if you guys like the other way if you like if you guys like the other smooth way around it it's fine if you guys like this this is all it's also fine uh that being said now that we uh, let's just apply these mods oh what oh wait just apply these mods real quick and i'll export this back into roblox and we can have a comparison between the two variants let's see you guys then all right in roblox here we see the old model i colored them gray and the new one i colored them red as you can see there is a major difference here especially with the lighting effect on the sleeve you look at that see there's like two lines right there we don't really see that on the, the new version i think that looks really really nice there is some like weird issue at the tip here I, I noticed it in Blender, but I forgot to mention it in the recording, but I don't know how to really fix that. Maybe what you can do is separate them, like have the separate the sleeve part from the main sleeve area. So you can just apply the weighted normals here instead of applying it to the entire mesh. But if we just look at it for a moment, this is just a big difference there's a much less shading errors especially on the sleeve here i think that looks a lot better that being said i think this will be the end of the video thank you for watching this one everyone um if you have any questions feel free to put it in the comment if you think i got any info wrong feel free to also put it in the comment so i can correct myself and uh yeah that will be it 
Have a great day, everyone. Hey guys, Editor Kaiju here. So I know it might be too early to say this, but I just want to tell you guys thank you. Like, in all honesty. The support you guys have been giving through these videos and the comment you guys have gave, it motivates me to continue making this video. So I just want to thank you guys for that. That being said though, I'll put this question here, which most people might not see, so I might put a community post about it. But do you guys like the more shorter and digestible video, like the uh, breaking video? I edited that one a lot. Or do you guys like longer, more raw video where you see every process that I take to get to the output? Leave your comment about that below. I'll be checking them out periodically. Well, with that being said, do have a great day, everyone.